first song on the album actually is called Daddy's Tribute. And if you listen to it, it's not me singing. I am singing on that. I'm singing one of the background vocals. But the person that, that's actually leading is my father, uh, Bishop Matthew Williams, um, who was a spiritual leader within our church reformation, um, within our city, our state. So many people felt his presence. He was a gentle giant, as people call him even though some people might not call him gentle because he was a man of authority. Um, a man who stood for his beliefs, stood for living a holy and separated life the best way he knew how. And one of the songs that he used to love to sing was one of those old hymns, uh, I wanna live so God can use me. I'm gonna live so God can use me anywhere and all the time. And everyone knew that was his song. It was to a point he's one of those preachers whenever he would get up and preach that he had to sing a song. So those of us who sang in the choir or backed him up, we just knew to stand up and get ready to sing something. And nine times out of ten, he was going to sing that song. There were other songs that he sung, but that was his song. And um, I wanted to write a song that... I wanted to write a song that was a memorandum to him and also a declaration that I get it, dad. That was your part of your testimony. That was what you lived for. That was your MO that you wanted and you chose to, and you did live for God every day so that he could use you. Um, for those of us that ever lived and walked with him, he was like always on ready. No matter where he went, he knew everybody. He talked to everybody. He, he had no strangers. There were no strangers that he could run into. And he was ready at the drop of a dime to minister to anyone. Someone come up to him, whether it was confrontational, whether it was just questioning. He was ready and willing to be that light, be that witness. Sometimes, and this is even talking about myself, it's like, well, God, have your way, use me. And then when the opportunity comes, we get shy. And we don't want to say anything. But I, I'm like, we don't have time for that. <laughs> we don't have time for that. People in the world are hurting. People in the world are asking questions. They need comfort. They need love. And are we ready and willing for God to place us in a situation where he can use us as his conduit to show forth his love? And that's one of the things that my dad did. He was going to preach. He was going to talk. He was going to love on you. He was going to fuss at you, especially if you weren't doing right. But with that fuss came love. With that reprimand came, all right, now this is what you need to do to get right. And so I put that, I actually, it took a while for me to decide whether or not I was going to put that clip in there because grief is real. And I know there are still a lot of people that are grieving the loss of my father because he was a lot of people's spiritual father. Um, he was a lot of people's only friend, trusted confidant, and I I knew that some people might have a hard time. There are some people that still tell me to this day that they skip over that one. But again, this album is my heart, um, my journey through it. So knowing that that was my dad's testimony, I'm going to live so God can use me anywhere all the time. I was like, I want that to be mine too, but how can I make it me? And so I started just playing with some melodies in my head and just thinking about it and I'm like well the gist of it is I want to live for you anywhere all the time I am yours to be used every day of my life I am yours to be used so I make this declaration I'll be a vessel tried and true Lord anywhere all the time I am yours to be used and I came up with the melody first I was like yeah, that's what it is. Anywhere. I'm like, it can be like a little bounce. Mm, hey. And then I sat down and, you know, I just started putting together the lyrics. And my favorite verse, I would have to say, is the second verse. My favorite verse is the second verse. Um, because it really, to me, puts a bite on what we're talking about when we say we want to live for God because you can try to sugarcoat it all you want but there's a difference between clean and unclean holy and unholy right and wrong 
There is. There's no gray area. And so to me, that second verse was, you know, I'm like, that's it. I am a living sacrifice. Want to be pleasing in your sight for my reflection to reveal you every day and every night. May have to turn down earthly pleasures. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I may have to turn down earthly pleasures and deny myself what? Some fun. And that to me, as a girl who's born and raised in a church, I think some people make a, a mistake of not talking about that that when you are out fulfilling the lust of your flesh, and I'm not just talking about sex, but just out there doing what you want to do, having fun, and just no inhibitions, and it's like, I can live in my best life, like whatever you want to do as your best life. Tell the truth, it's fun. You are having a good time. But truthfully, you end up having no substance afterward. Trust me, I know. We, every single one of us who's born and raised in church, if, we were, if we're honest, we admit, you know what? Yeah, we try to dibble and dabble out and go out and do things. And then when we're done, it's like, but I, what did I get out of that? And that's to me what that second verse is talking about. I may have to turn down earthly pleasures. I may have to deny myself things that are fun. But that, that, that last part of that verse says, but the reward for my surrender, me saying, you know what, God, I'm not going to live the way I want to live. I'm going to live the way that you desire for me to live as outlined by your word, period. And I know if I do that, there's a reward for me. You gave us a promise, the promise that when Jesus came down on the cross and he died for our sins and he brought us back together to you, oh God, that you know what? I'm going to get a reward. And it's not just heaven. It's about my crown. It's about paradise. Like it's so much stuff that's involved that we forget to talk about sometimes. So yeah, I get excited talking about that because when I think about it, um, that again was my dad's, that was his thing. I'm going to live so God can use me anywhere all the time. And he did. And if he can do it, then there's no reason why I can't. <laughs> there's no reason why I can't carry on the torch of God, of holiness, of living right, of loving people. And I do still have fun, FYI. <laughs> I do a lot of laughing and having fun. But yeah. So that's the story behind Live For You. It's me picking up that torch of my father and carrying it on in my own way. <laughs>